Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to The Arts Project. Today we're going to be talking about how Gary Vee is going to be a billionaire. The lessons we'll learn from Disney, Coco Melon, and Spider-Man. Or the intro. Welcome to the eyes, OJ, OJ. Welcome to the eyes, OJ. All right, guys, you already know Gary Vee is my boy. Um, everything I built is off the back of his lessons. YKTR, YKTR Sports, the reason why I started a podcast, blah, blah, blah. You've heard all this shit before. Now, this is why Gary Vee is going to be on track to be a billionaire. Now, to understand the difference between a million and a billion, let's just put it down to this. So if $1 was one second, how much time do you reckon a million seconds would be? I'll give you the answer, 12 days. Now, the difference between a million and a billion, how long do you think a billion seconds would be? I'll let you think. You won't get it unless you know the answer. 31 years. So I know it's a lot of money that we can't comprehend, but the difference between a million and and a billion is a difference between 12 days and 31 years as well. So that's why there's not many billionaires in the world. Plenty of millionaires. So Gary Vee's history, you probably already know it. Early investor in Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr. Vayner Media turns over 200 million plus a year. And also for him to rock up to do a keynote, costs 100K. So every time you see him on stage, he's making 100K. So you know he's going to be making bank. Now, he launched something last year called Friends. NFT craze was going off. Um, I think he made about $75 million from that which is crazy, utility on it, it's been good. Um, obviously, you get access to VCon and stuff like that. Now, it's not so much how much money he made just then, but the IP that he owns through VFriends. Now, there's a thing called Disneyfication, look it up, it's really cool. And the reason I look, one time I looked at that Disney map or the Disneyfication map, it really changed my mindset around media and content and everything else as well. So, Disney's worth $180 billion, but let's focus on one character, Mickey Mouse. There's a bunch of different characters, but let's just focus on Mickey Mouse. Now, the model is you own your IP for Mickey Mouse. You start to build out a really cool show from there. If you can garnish an audience, you then add product to market fit. So that's the basic concept of the funnel. IP, make the content, monetize it at the bottom of the funnel. Now, how you monetize it? Licensing agreements, merch, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse merch, lunchboxes, pencil cases, school bags, etc., etc., etc. If you're a fan of something as a kid, you probably had some bit of merch attached to that as well. Now, I think Mickey Mouse and Disney is a global brand. Don't just think about your own consumption of product. Think about it globally as well. And as a kid, where do you want to go? What's the ultimate dream? To head to Disneyland. Now, I've, once Disney sort of built out this business model and understood how well it worked, um, they took over the rights for Marvel in 2009. So they bought it for $4 billion. Sounds like a lot of money. But when you break it down like this, in 2009... Disney brought the rights for Marvel for 5,000 characters. So there's actually 5,000 characters within the Marvel network that they can use. Obviously, I don't know who the 2,000 are, but I actually didn't even know there was 5,000 characters. Now, in 2015, Sony made a deal with Marvel and then where they can share the rights for Spider-Man as well. So obviously, they share the rights for this as well. But look at Spider-Way, No Way Home Revenue. With nearly $1.9 billion gross worldwide, Spider-Man, No Way Home made a staggering $610 million profit. So I think 2009, they bought the rights for 5,000 different characters for $4 billion. And in 2000 and 2021, with one movie, they made $610 million profit. So pretty good investment, if you ask me. Um, crazy. Now, there's also like a little kid show called Coca Melon. I'm, a I'm not a parent, so I don't know what this is. Had to search it up on YouTube, and something blew my mind when I saw it. Started back on YouTube, 2005, husband and wife bought it. Um, really interesting YouTube what they do, and this is really good marketing tip as well, they use YouTube, which is a free platform. Whenever they introduce a new character, they'll test it out on YouTube first. If that character starts to fly and they can understand the data of watch time, of comments, of whatever they use to analyze it, they'll then use that character, build new shows, and then sell them off to Netflix as well. So really interesting business model that they use there. Um, was streamed 33 billion times, uh, 33 billion minutes in just the year of 2021, which is crazy minutes. And if you break that down, that'll be 62,785 years. The average lifespan is 72.6 years for each person. So we'd have to live 864 times over for us to amount that times of streaming. So crazy, crazy numbers, crazy. Now, the interesting thing is, and this is where it's all starting to link up, two former Disney employees actually bought it in 2021 for $3 billion. They've obviously seen the watch time, the data, everything they can monetize it. They sold it for $3 billion, a little kid show. Crazy. Now, how does VFriends all tie this and in, tie into this? Now, VFriends has built off 260 different eight char 268 different characters. One's called Caring Camel, one's called Patient Panda, one's called Common Sense Cow. Now, all these types of characters are just going to build out, a, put out a positive message, and be targeting like sort of kids' markets as well. So, if you looked at 
the Disney stuff, Mickey Mouse, make content, monetize later. You look at Spider-Man, cool character, on the IP, pulled out some really cool movies, make close to $2 billion, 610 in profit. Coco Melon, little kid show, tested out on YouTube. Once it flies, kids love it. Now, v, now v Friends or Gary V is just going to follow that exact same formula. Karen Kanda, Patient Panda, pulled out some really cool shows, monetize it, licensing agreements, merch, blah, blah, blah. Could be even be a V Friends sort of Disneyland later, in, later on down the line. Now, the best thing about targeting to kids or marketing to kids is they're loyal. Once they love a Batman, once they love a Spider-Man, once they love a Mickey Mouse, it's game over. They're locked in for two years. And I know kids don't have money, but their mums do, their aunties do, their uncles do, their grandparents do. Their friends of a friend knows that he likes Mickey Mouse, let me get him a Mickey Mouse case. So it's a really interesting business model, and this is why Gary Vee is going to be a fucking billionaire. Crazy, huh? Thank you, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, appreciate you guys. Like, comment, and subscribe.